Hello everyone, welcome back to Power Stroke Maintenance. Today I'm going to be doing a video on how you can improve the ride quality of your Super Duty pickup truck. The first thing I'm going to recommend doing to improve the ride feel and just the overall quality and the precision of handling on your Super Duty is replace the shocks. It's eight bolts. Whether you're going with the Fox 2.0s like I have, or the Bilstein 5100 series, or the 4600 series Bilsteins, they will dramatically improve your ride quality. So I started with the OEM Ford shocks, and then I went to the Bilstein 4600 series because I couldn't find any of the 5100 series. They were out of stock. And just putting the Bilstein 4600s on, they're only 100 bucks a shock. It was like night and day over OEM. With the 4600 series, I was getting some sort of noise. I think there was a rock in my front suspension, but I thought it was the shocks. And so because this channel is about testing parts and all that, I went out and I spent the money to get the Fox Performance 2.0s, which run about $200 a shock. So they're twice as expensive as the Bilsteins, but I would say they are way better than just two times as good as the Bilsteins. They are like 10 times better than the Bilsteins in terms of precision, in terms of the composure on rough roads. I do not drive this truck rock crawling or 100 miles an hour through whoops. I drive this truck mostly on the road and then on sketchy dirt roads, back roads with a lot of washout. And I wanted something that would handle well in the corners, but also give me enough body roll control so that when my sway bar kicks in and it kicks the front of the truck back and forth, there's some measure of control when it gets into that rocking motion. So again, replace your shocks. It will really help the ride quality. It will not soften the ride. I wanna make that very clear. It will not soften the ride of your Super Duty if you do shocks, but it will help with body roll. It'll help with cornering. If you hit an expansion joint on the highway, your truck won't lurch crazily side by side shocks are huge and so for 800 bucks you can replace all four get fox 2.0s you will not be disappointed oh this thing's such a mess the winter time does not treat vehicles well the next thing that you should think about doing to improve the handling and the ride quality of your super duty is put an aftermarket steering stabilizer on so i have you can see it here i have a bilstein 5100 series steering stabilizer underneath my truck. And so what that does is dampen the lurching or the, the jerking that these 35s cause when they hit a bump because they're heavy tires, they'll pull the whole steering mechanism in different ways. So this provides a certain measure of damping. I did have a Fox ATS steering stabilizer on this before that was put on by the previous owner and i had to take it off because one of the parts wore out and i ended up giving it to my brother so these bilstein steering stabilizers are definitely better than factory oem but they're not as good as fox and so long-term plan with this is i'm going to get a matching fox performance 2.0 steering stabilizer to clamp on to my drag link and that is going to go in this truck but do your steering stabilizer it's for the Fox performance, another 300 bucks. What is that? That gets you up to about $1,100 with the shocks to get better ride quality. I haven't replaced any of the OEM load bearing components, no springs, nothing. It's all the same. And I can even show you here, you know, you'll see this is a OEM spring. It's not progressive stock ride height, just shock steering stabilizer. All right, and then the last thing you can do, I know a lot of people talk about, and this is probably a little bit more expensive, but get aftermarket tires, or even with your OEM tires, figure out a way to get force scan, go to an aftermarket shop or buy it yourself. It's like 60 bucks for the dongle and $12 a year for the software, and lower the TMS, uh, TPMS threshold light in your BDCM in the module, you can go in and there's a new way to 
without having to go into the as built in four scan and know the actual codes, you can lower the TPMS light threshold on your truck. Now what that does is it allows you to run lower pressures without having it throw a code. And why that's helpful is because the factory threshold is set to like 60 or 70 PSI. Like my door sticker says I should have 60 in the front and then I should have 75 in the back. And that is assuming you are towing to the GVWR max. Like this truck is fully loaded at 10,000 pounds and I have it freighted all the time. And that's just not the case. And so I know I've had several people in the comments on some of my reels talk about, you know, what I should be running for tire pressure. I appreciate all your input. It's been super helpful. And I've decided on my truck, I'm running 45 PSI in the front and 45 in the back. I know sometimes people run less in the back and I tried running like 30 in the back and I just didn't like how it felt. It was just a little too mushy. I'm leaving 45 and 45 nice and simple. I did do a chalk test and my rears are definitely wearing a little unevenly, but I rotate my tires every 5,000 miles on the dot, like every oil change I'm rotating them. So I'm not worried about uneven wear, but lower your TPMS sensor light and the threshold in your BDCM. And once you do that with Forescan, you can run lower pressures. And that is the last piece of this puzzle that I found to get way better ride quality over stock. Now I did 35 1250s on my truck with a stock 18 inch wheel. I think it looks great. You could put aftermarket wheels, but these four tires, they're about eight, uh, 400 bucks a tire for this. They're load range F, so they're a little bit more heavy duty. I run them at 45 PSI. Now that was about $1,600 for the tires, then about $1,100 for the steering stabilizer and the shocks. So to improve, generally speaking, the ride quality, not necessarily soften it, I mean, obviously soften it with the tires, but I didn't soften or, or lighten the load capacity at all on my leaf springs or my front coils, you can get incredible handling out of these trucks. Now, it's not the same as putting a Carly kit on. I, I love the Carly kits, don't get me wrong. One day, I hope to put one on this truck because they're just the ultimate in terms of capability. And if you have Timberns or airbags, like you can still tow a lot of weight. So I think that would be awesome. But for us guys out there that wanna keep some level of stiffness, maybe we don't wanna have to go put progressive leaves and coils and you know a new track bar and do the full shebang, just doing shocks, a steering stabilizer, and then lowering the air pressure in your tires is a huge improvement over stock. And I would highly recommend you doing this. I mean, what is that? $1,600 for tires and then $1,100. So what does that put us at? 2700 bucks now that doesn't include the labor to install these but shocks it's eight bolts the steering stabilizer is two bolts you're going to need to get your tires mountain balanced so you know call it an even three thousand dollars you can spend which you know is still significant i don't you know don't get me wrong three thousand bucks and you get a great riding truck and you get new tires and great components that are going to last you versus you know going to the carly kit where you know they do make a budget friendly kit that's like a thousand bucks but you only get front shocks and front coils and it doesn't really do the full kit and caboodle for everything on the truck in terms of front and rear shocks all four tires you know it just includes the shocks and the coils and the leaf springs and those carly kits if you do a full kit you know, especially if it's, you know, th this is more of like a commuter setup, right? Like I'm not gonna go smash whoops in this thing or go rock crawling. But you know, if you do a full Carly commuter kit, it can get up to $6,000. So this is about half that. Get your truck riding really good. Get some great components, make it look good and not really sacrifice the load that you can put on the truck. I enjoy having a diesel as you know an enthusiast. I enjoy working on it. So for me, it's it's fun to have it and it's worth it to have it even, even with the extra expense. So I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe and we'll see you next time.